I'm just hoping for the best, really. And if, in fact, I am forced to move out because the sea comes too close, when the sea comes halfway across my flower bed in the middle of the lawn, I'm going to move out because that's getting a bit close. It wasn't homely or warm or welcoming at all. I had nothing here. All my belongings were in my other house. And so I felt a bit like an intruder in a way. But as I brought things in and put books up, and it was one evening when I walked across the room to pick something up, and I realised how boxed in I'd been in my cottage down the road where there was, well, there was no space and no light. It was a very dark place. And suddenly I realised that I was back in a, a sort of space and everything clicked into place at that point. And I realised I loved this place and it means more to me than anything since my childhood home, which I absolutely adored. It's all right. It's OK. It's OK. It's all right. Is Soki. <coughs> Soki. Come on. This is why I was so shocked when, th months or so after I bought it, I was called to a meeting and sat round the table and the guy running the meeting said, all you people at the end of Beach Road are going to be knocked down. And I said, no. And he said, well, what do you mean, no? And I said, no, I'm not going to be knocked down. And he said, Bryony, you'll have to, you'll have to, you know, put up with it. when we had the last tidal surge. I happened to drop into the pub on my way back from work and it was half past five in the evening and there'd only just been a warning about it. And I'd only just worked out what was happening and the wind was coming down from the north and it was actually funneling the water into a space. So because it couldn't get through fast enough, it was getting deeper which meant that the sea level was about halfway up the cliff and I watched it across the bay and when the waves hit the cliff great chunks were coming off boulders like that, it was serious. What I'm very quietly doing is uh, tipping bits of garden waste, organic things, over the cliff 
which the council have said they'll sort of turn a blind eye to more or less as long as it's not too obvious and not too um well I'm doing it bit by bit. Hopefully nobody will notice. And it's certainly doing a lot of good in that it's stabilizing the clear. The only time I ever have doubts is when I've got bronchitis and you're pretty depressed anyway in the middle of winter and when the wind's in a certain direction it drives the rain under the roof there and so you get pools of water in the kitchen and along the hall there and when the wind's in certain directions it seems to blow straight in through the windows and things. And occasionally, you know, that makes me think what am I doing here? Part of it is my feeling that I'm defending a bit of England by staying here and a surprisingly large number of people also seem to feel that and they say, good, you know, don't back down, you're, you're standing your ground and, you know, it's very, very supportive, balanced out by the people who, who just say you're, you're absolutely off your head not taking 50,000 and walking away. And when I say to them, well, uh, if I take the 50,000 and walk away, what have I got? And they say, well, you could live in a council flat or something. And I don't, that's not me at all. Um, I'd, I'd rather live in a rather damp, drippy, electrically unsafe house with the light coming in on either side than in a nice centrally heated flat. I don't think it's ever going to happen and on the other hand I'm perfectly well aware that it is going to happen. A bit like dying I think, that we all know we are going to die one day but we don't really expect to die, we're just going to keep going and I think it's a very similar sort of feeling. <laughs> 